All right, so Mike's been inspired to be a little creative, and one of the major components of a planned project just showed up on my doorstep today. So what was in the box? Well, I was actually surprised anything was still in the box because it was kind of split open upon arrival, but things got delayed a little bit by the latest COVID surge. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have all felt the effects of that. But I purchased this from Chicago Knife Works, which is an awesome company, great prices, great customer service. And it is a Hanway replacement arming sword blade. Now they make several replacement blades, blunt and sharp. There is a blunt and sharp version of this. I obviously, you know, knowing me, got the sharp one, right? But they have rapier blades of different lengths. They have a number of long sword and bastard sword blades. This is the only one in this particular length class. This reminds me a lot of the blade on my Ronin Italian arming sword. So consider that review, give you a sense of it in terms of specs and things like that. Possibly a little lighter and thinner. If you look at the flex overall, that reminds me a little bit more of my Kingston side sword, but not quite. It's kind of like halfway between the two. It's got the width, the beef of that arming sword, but slightly more towards the overall lightness. The blade weight by itself is about a pound and a half, which doesn't tell me much because I don't know what kind of hilt's going to go on it yet. Obviously, I can't also give you a decent point of balance on it. But let's consider some of the specs. Yes, it is, well, pretty sharp, actually, out of the box. Nice tip, nice plane. It's got a fuller that runs, well, three quarters of the length of the blade. 1566 steel. Came, well, pretty good looking out of the box, so don't have to do much to it. Maybe give it a bit of a polish because it is kind of a wire brushed finish. It's not a big deal. Overall length of the blade is 31 inches with a six and a half inch tang, which includes about an inch and a quarter of threads. Now, other specs on it. The tang is a quarter of an inch thick, so it's pretty beefy, and then it's got a ni nice distal taper all the way down to the point. Width of the blade at the base is two inches. The width of the, let me grab my ruler here, the width of the tang is just a shave over an inch where it hits the blade, and then at the very base of it, it's so it tapers down pretty evenly to half an inch and as you can see the fuller goes kind of into that tang so what i'm thinking what i what i planned we'll see how it works out is i wanted to make a side sword out of it something beefier and a better cutter than my kingston but maybe not quite so much of a beast as my Munich. And I love both those swords dearly, but they're kind of two extremes of the spectrum. And I'm thinking, well, if I can find a sweet spot right in the middle. This cost me about 120 bucks to give you an idea of how much these go for and, and different prices at different places. So I feel like with the length of this compared to some of the other hilts I've got, that I could set this up with a complex hilt and have a Ricasso exposed here for my finger, maybe, we'll see, depending on, well, what I find. Back to the shopping and to be continued. All right, so I wanna do a quick initial impressions review of this Hanway practical rapier. Now this is a, a blunt training one. Comes in two different sizes, a 37 inch and a 41. I bought the 41, well even though, at least by the way I've learned how to measure rapiers and based on, well, what the lengths of all my other functional sharp rapiers are, it's about three inches too long for me. So measured a couple of different ways. Why did I get the 41 instead of the 37? Well, it was available, it was on sale, and one of the, uh, the issues that other reviewers have had is Hanway's choice of this sort of nail head button tip. Now, I've heard reviewers say that this can actually cut, tear up their protective gear, but this particular one is, is pre it's pretty nicely rounded, so that's not too bad, but the other criticism they have of it 
is it doesn't really allow you to slip a blunt tip, replace a blunt tip on there very easily. So anticipating problems with that, I figured I'd get one that was a little bit longer, cut it down a few inches, roll it over, make a really good safe tip that I could then put a blunt cap, padded cap over the top of and use it as a practice analog in, well, my exploration of HEMA rapier. However, I do have some other plans for it as well. Let's take a look at the specs first. Like I said, 41 inch blade, weight a surprising two pounds, nine ounces on my scale. It doesn't feel it. The point of balance is about three and a half inches north of the guard. In hand, it just, it feels really good and responsive. I have to give it that. Let's take a look at blade flexibility. Yes, this is a blunt practice blade. So yeah, it's got quite a bit of flex. But the flex is, well, more towards the tip. So I think that's an appropriate amount of flex. It's got some distal taper. It has profile taper. Also has some pretty good edge plane geometry. They shape the blade, even though it's a cheap practice blade, pretty darn well. But where it really shines is in the hilt. And this is one of the major reasons I bought it. I watched a video from Monstrous Monk. He was cutting with the Munich, Windless Munich Cut and Thrust Sword, which I have and I love, but he said he liked it better in this hilt. So he swapped the blade over. Now, I did buy that Hanway Tinker Pierce Arming Sword Blade, looking for a hilt for it. So what I'm hoping to do is set this up so I can use it for both, well, a practice rapier and potentially mount a cutting side sword blade into it. But what you get for a grip? The the pommel, it's it's actually solid. I screwed it off. One, one thing that other people have complained about, this little extra knobby thing on the end, a number of people just cut that off. It's not getting in my way right now. I may change my mind on that later. But the complex hilt is, other reviewers have pointed out, in use, extended use, super sturdy super solid, holds up to a lot of use and abuse. And my initial impression of it is all the edges are nicely rounded. It's just really comfy, sized for my, well, kind of tiny little hands, almost perfectly. Now the grip is a double wire wrap, so you've got braid and, and not so much braid. And it's got metal bolsters and there is plastic underneath. Let's take a look at it. I'll take it apart here really quick. Now, yes, I did take it apart before this. It was initially very, very tight and required some padded vice grips to break that seal. But now, yeah, they don't have a lot of threaded material coming out the end of that. It will take a lot more. So putting a cutting blade in, I will, I will sink it deeper into this pommel. But it is, it's a solid little pommel. Plastic grip. Pretty light, but you know, it's pretty well finished. There's no, no sharp wires or anything sticking out of it, so that's not too bad. And then you've got the blade. So, yeah, it's kind of a narrow tang. So I will have to do a little bit of trimming and reshaping, both to, well, the fixtures here and to the new blade I have, to try to, again, preserve its function for both purposes if I can and well, well, we'll see what I can make out of it. I may wind up abandoning the project and putting that, that Tinker Pierce blade in a whole different set of mountings, but for now, my initial impression of this sword, and yes, you can buy replacement blades for this fairly inexpensively. I, I think for, I got it for around 200 bucks. I think it's a pretty good deal in a practice sword. Again, I'm no master expert and really don't even have that much experience with a rapier. I've only been training with these for, well, about a year and a half now, and have mostly been working with, well, cutting swords and other kinds of analogs for partner practice, well, plastic swords. And we'll take a look at some of the other things I've been working with in future videos, but for a usable steel sparring blade, especially with this hilt set up for the price, of, I think it's a pretty good deal. Otherwise, to be continued. All right, to quote John Hannibal Smith, I love it when a plan comes together.
On the other hand, oh my, what have I done? Yikes, I feel kind of like Dr. Frankenstein. Okay, quick correction before we move on. In that first section, when I introduced the Hanwei Tinker replacement blades, I think I said they were 1566, which is Hanwei's favorite steel. Well, I read the fine print, and it turns out this is 5160 spring steel. That's been mar quenched. And if you want to look up the science on that, it's pretty interesting, but theoretically, it should make for a really tough blade. Time will tell, but so far, yeah, so impressive. But the two objectives I had in mind in that first section, did I, did I meet them? Well, objective one was to have a sword that was lighter than my Munich, so quicker, more responsive, but heavier than my Kingston, which I think is just a little bit too light. It, it makes the sword just a little too flexible. Sort of succeeded and sort of failed. The Munich is three pounds, four ounces. The final build on this is three pounds, two, so a little bit lighter, but the point of balance is unexpectedly further forward, three and a half inches from the base of the blade, from the Ricasso with a two inch Ricasso, so three and five and a half inches from the cross guard. That makes for a blade that's a lot more, well, blade forward, blade present. Now in cutting, Talk about that in a second. That turns out to be quite a good thing, but you can see I have my full brace on. It's required because, yeah, this is this is quite a beefy monster and more than anticipated, but not necessarily uncomfortably so. We'll look at handling in a second. So I'm not planning on changing any of that. I'll call it good physical therapy for now. But what about that second objective? A side sword that's a good cutter. Yeah, the geometry on this blade, how thin it is compared to how wide it is. For you guys who are into Tamashigiri, you know what that formula creates. Kind of a razor blade. Now, I promise I'm, I'm experimenting with some new equipment that can get me maybe outside when the weather starts improving here, hopefully soon. Show you some cutting, so we'll do some catch up with some of the swords I've reviewed before. But while I was doing the assembly tests, I had some some heavy cardboard, not just like sword boxes, which are kind of sort of tatami mat shaped, but um, long sheets, which allow me to see not only how well the sword slices through a resisting target, but how well I can maintain edge alignment with it. And using basically what would be the mono uchi, the primary cutting surface, with a little bit of draw in the cut to so get the good slice, yeah, it cut really, really well through those targets. Now, as I mentioned in the first section, no secondary edge bevel edge grind. So that takes a really, really sharp edge. Now, the other kind of cutting, I plan to do a separate video on tip cutting. This is a kind of cut that will sort of work even with a sword that doesn't have much of an edge, like a rapier or even a small sword. And the idea is you just lash out with the tip or the first inch or so of blade and rake across your target. It can, well, discourage, frighten your enemy, cause a shallow wound. And we'll talk about the difference between doing it with a sword like this and say a katana with a kasaki. Definitely different effects, but with this sword, because the tip is so thin and razor sharp that even the slightest little touch with this thing, just, it's like a box cutter, does an exceptional amount of slicing just with its own mass and momentum. I don't have to try very hard at all, and there's not a lot of flex in the blade. I'm, I'm getting, possibly from the spring steel, sometimes an impact or thrusting. A little, a little bit of shock and vibration doesn't really translate back to the hand, but you can see it in the blade. In the thrust, it's not bending much at all. I expected it to flex more, but if you look at the bend, yeah, distal taper on this thing works for it really well. The flex is very much towards the tip and it doesn't bend much. And in the thrust, it's, it's not really bending when I lean on targets. 
and hit into them even if I raise my hand up over the line of the targets as I demonstrated in that, that comparative thrusting video. I'm, I'm getting more, again, just a little bit of wobble and vibration, but it's not, it's not flexing significantly. So, good thruster. Now, specs, other specs, 31 inches of blade plus two inches of Ricasso gives me 33 inches of reach from the cross guard. I was thinking I could reuse, repurpose an existing scabbard that I had, but no. Miscalculation. That blade is two inches wide at the base. I do not have another sword that, that's, that's that wide, including my long swords. I'm going to have to make a custom scabbard for this. So that's a project that's under consideration. Definitely needs a nice scabbard. So, let's take a look at, well, how it came together. Now, what I did was I tried to cut it so it lined up the base of the blade with the top of, well, the top rings. And it's even, but it's, it's not perfectly so because the guard itself is not perfectly perpendicular. So I did the best job I could. I used the original rapier blade as a template, and that wound up giving me a two-inch ricasso and then I used my grinder with a quench tank of cold water right there because if you have a pre-tempered blade, you want to keep it cool under that friction. So I kept going into the water every few seconds to make sure I didn't overheat the steel. I wound up just having to shave off an eighth of an inch evenly off each side of the existing tang and then use the files to cut an accurate square shelf to fit the guard. And once I did that, the guard dropped on like it was made for the sword. Now the grip, as I mentioned, you've got steel bolsters and a couple of layers of steel wire over plastic. I wound up leaving it a bit snug, which is why I'm not taking it apart to show you because I did have to tap it together. Now that wound up, unfortunately, I had it sunk into a block of wood, but it rolled about half a millimeter on my tip. So I'm a little bit worried about my tip being fragile. That might make me cut it down an inch or so in the future to give it a, a slightly thicker tip, but for now I'm going to leave it. We'll see how it holds up. I think that was what I would consider abusive levels of impact. Don't think it's going to do it again. We'll see. We'll see how it holds up. So tap that on. I miscalculated a little bit on the threading depth of the pommel, so I had to stick a couple of washers in there. And I'm looking for some washers that'll fit, you know, a little bit more perfectly. These are a little bit skinny, but I don't think that's glaringly awful. Everything wound up going on there straight and, yes, really tight. There's no play, no wobble, no rattle, even, even under impact. So pretty pleased with that. And it only took me a couple of hours to do it. Went a lot smoother than I thought it was. Result, well, I have to admit, it looks a little extreme. Big wide blade, little skinny grip. But it feels surprisingly good, at least in my hands, and actually works really well with my different braces as well. Some of my braces interfere with some of my grips, especially on European swords. This one, not so much. This, this one fits really well. can wrap my finger up over that cross guard, even with the squared... Ricasso, it's, it's not really sharp, so it's not cutting into me. So yeah, very, very comfortable in either hand. And yeah, it just feels really good. Now, as I mentioned, really good cutter, but blade fold. So this is gonna take some getting used to, some training, some PT for me, but I'm already starting to kind of get the feel of this thing in terms of being able to support it, wield it, you know, figure out what I can what I can do with it. So, I have been acquiring some of the classics to study, to continue my uh, my exploration of HEMA. It's coming in handy. But yeah, I can I can certainly use it for a couple of gen techniques. It is it's a little massive for that. In 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 cuts, I've gotten to the point where already I've got some decent ability to do some cutting with it. But yeah, it's it's definitely got a lot of torque. I'm going to have to train with it, get used to it, 
might feel a little bit better with a glove on as well. But um, yeah, I have to say at least for now, I'm pretty impressed with the, not only the final result, but well, how relatively simple it was and well, frustration free to put together. So I would definitely recommend if you're looking for uh, the base of a custom build or looking to replace, especially if you've already got a sword with a threaded construction and you're thinking about putting a new blade on it, definitely recommend those Tinker replacement blades because they're not very expensive and you get a lot for your money. Also, you know, this practical rapier hilt, I can certainly swap the other blade back on it with a little bit of tappa tappa to take it back apart. It'll still fit in there perfectly fine. But yeah, I, th I think that the, as a practice tool for about 200 bucks, it's, it's not a bad practice rapier whatsoever. Again, I don't have a whole lot of experience with practice rapiers. And I know what I like in a, in a live blade and I like this in a live blade, let me tell you. Looks a little, little extreme, but um, kind of speaks to me. Anyway, probably to be continued as I take this out and do some performance videos or any other updates, upgrades, changes. Hopefully no disasters happen. Until then, I hope you found this interesting, informative, useful information. As always, thanks for watching, following, subscribing. And I hope to see you back for more.